Are you interested in becoming a financial coach, but the biggest doubt you have is how am I going to find clients? When you're just starting out, this is very intimidating. It contributes to a lot of imposter syndrome and ultimately causes a lot of aspiring financial coaches to give up. How to find financial coaching clients. Number one, talk to people about what you do in person. In person there is in bold. Highlight, underline, the key to finding financial coaching clients in 2024 and beyond is talking to people in person. Several reasons why. If you can clearly communicate what you do in person, then you can clearly communicate what you do online, but it doesn't really work the other way around. There's a lot of people that can make amazing graphics online. They've got clever captions, funny memes. They can hop on stories and talk to their phone all day. And don't get me wrong, this probably will get you clients eventually. But if you want a no-fail solution to get clients soon, talk to people in person. And another reason that this is number one on the list is that when you talk to people in person, you get instant feedback on what you're saying. Is this resonating? Are their eyes glazing over? Are they confused? Do they seem nervous or uncomfortable? Are they glancing at their phone? Are they looking around? Talking to people about what you do is a learned skill. It's not an either you're born with it or you're not. It's a learned skill that you will continue to improve. I'm still continuing to improve this skill and every single coach that's watching this should be too. Another reason that this is number one on the list is because your ability to convey no like and trust factors is like a thousand percent stronger in person versus online. Maybe something that you said in person didn't resonate and you can tell by looking at them. So you clarify, okay, now we're on the same page again and you can continue the conversation. Another good reason is that they aren't multitasking when they're talking to you. You have someone's undivided attention when you're talking to someone in person and online, you just don't. You have the ability to show your listening skills as well. Can you process the information that they're telling you and come back with a thoughtful question at the drop of a hat? Or are you so used to getting a comment or a DM online where you can read it once, read it twice, put your initial response, reread that, edit it, reread it again, Okay, send. That's just not the real world and it's definitely not real world coaching. Another reason that I'm really harping on in-person communication skills is that this is the essence of coaching. I'm always so amazed when someone comes to me, they ask how they can get clients, what more they can do. I basically tell them this whole spiel and they're like, eh, but isn't there something else I can do? And I'm like, dude, you don't like talking to people? Like, what do you think coaching is? Did you know that my one-to-one clients pay off an average of $10,000 while working with me? Do you want to become a financial coach to help your clients do the same? Here's the three big things I see holding coaches back. You don't know how to charge for financial coaching, imposter syndrome, not knowing your ideal client. This is why I created my free 60-minute pricing workshop that you can watch right now. In this pricing workshop, you'll learn the mindset that you need in order to sell confidently and with kindness, how to price your services so that you can work with dream clients, how to come alongside your prospective clients with empathy to empower them to make the best decision for themselves, and my number one way to overcome imposter syndrome when pricing your services. Don't let imposter syndrome win. You can overcome it to become an amazing financial coach. Click the link below to watch my free 60-minute pricing workshop now. Talking to people face-to-face or at the very least over Zoom, that is how I got clients for a long time. Everyone thinks, you know, I just get clients through YouTube, but they don't remember. I actually had my business for three and a half years before I started YouTube. And then I didn't really have that many subscribers for about another year after that. And you know why I started YouTube? because it was 2020. I couldn't go out and talk to people anymore. And that's what I was doing. And it's okay to feel nervous about going up to someone and talking to them about what you do. I would say that that's 100% normal, but you feel the fear and you do it anyway. You walk into a room of people you don't know, you introduce yourself and you talk about what you do. That difference right there doing it afraid, walking into the room, talking to people anyway, even though you feel nervous and you feel afraid, that is what separates aspiring financial coaches from very successful financial coaches. If you can walk into a room full of strangers and have a conversation with someone about what you do and ask questions about what they do too, 
you'll be just fine. Especially in 2024, people just don't do this anymore, truly. More on what to say here in a little bit. I wanna give you guys some more ideas on how you can use this. The second way to get financial coaching clients is networking groups. So from 2017 to 2020, I went to every single networking group in St. Charles County that I had an invite to. And these were Chamber of Commerce, BNI, Master Networks, all female groups. I never turned down an invite. And it was exhausting. Sometimes I was dragging myself there. It's very not my personality to walk into a room full of strangers and start talking about what I do. But I knew that I was making good connections and it was really good practice for me. Practice talking out loud about what you do. Every single time I felt more confident because I was introducing myself as a financial coach. And this will really help you because you'll get many opportunities to explain and talk about what you do, sometimes to an individual and then sometimes in front of the entire group. Your communication skills will make or break you as a financial coach. I know people become coaches and they're worried about knowing all the personal finance stuff. And I really think that's secondary. If you can't effectively communicate what you know, does it even matter? Okay, so how do we find networking groups? Here's exactly what I did. I started on LinkedIn. I connected with people that I knew and I asked them first. You'll probably get a few invites that way, but I know that those can dry up too. So on LinkedIn, what you'll do is find people who have several mutual connections. Your connection message could be, hey, I saw that we have a mutual connection, so-and-so, how do you know them? I'm a new financial coach in the area and I'm looking to connect with more people. You can ask them later on in the conversation if they have a networking group that they go to or if they have one that they recommend, but honestly, if they're already in one, they might just invite you on the spot too. We'll call them points because I can't remember exactly what they're called, but you get points in the networking groups usually for having a one-to-one -one with someone in the group. You get points for referrals and you get points for inviting new people. People are oftentimes in multiple groups groups too. Maybe they join a paid one that's a little more serious and then a free one that is more fun. If you go announce that you're looking to visit more networking groups and I almost guarantee you depending on the size of the group I bet people will come up to you afterward and invite you to another one. Once you get the ball rolling it does get a lot easier. You can also just look up the networking groups online find the leaders on LinkedIn and message them or email them that way. I've done this several times before as well so just google networking groups near me look up the leaders. Sometimes their email will be right there on the page. Sometimes you have to go to LinkedIn and message them that way and just send a similar message of, hi, I'm a new financial coach in the area and I would love to visit your networking group. Okay, so the next four actually build off of doing in-person networking and they are have one-to-ones with potential referral partners, collaborate with another professional to do a workshop or training, guest star on another professional's podcast, and then also you can trade services with another business for a set amount of time. These are all great next steps for you after after you go to these networking events. So I would say your number one goal is to have one-to-ones with potential referral partners. And your referral partners are gonna change depending on your ideal client. I've done another video on my favorite financial coaching ideal client, so I'll link that video here. But let's say your ideal client is someone who is going through a divorce or has just gone through a divorce. Your referral partners are gonna look very different from mine. Yours might be family counselors or family attorneys, realtors, therapists. Get coffee with them and pick their brain. Continue working on that in-person communication. And some of your one-to-ones will be great, some will be horrible. I think I've told this story on the channel before, but one time I went to a one-to-one -one with who I thought was gonna be a referral partner and I was totally duped. It was a bait and switch for an MLM. And before I know it, he's got this entire storefront set up at our table. And I'm just like, I'm so embarrassed. I'm just thinking to myself, if I faked a stroke, do you think he would let me leave? <laughs> Having one-to-ones with potential referral partners also gave me the ability to collaborate on workshops with them. And this is great communication practice for you and also helps you build know, like, and trust with other people. Same with guest starring on other podcasts. Practice telling your story in a more long form way. You can also trade services with another business for a set amount of time. Having these ideas in your back pocket when you have a one-to-one -one with a referral partner and you really hit it off helps both parties get some skin in the game for future referrals. So many one-to-ones that I had went really well. And then at the end, it was just kind of like, okay, so just, you know, hit me up if you ever 
need anything, I guess. And if you can take that connection instead to the next level, that really sets you apart and you will actually get referrals. It's so much better to have a few real referrals that you've actually collaborated with than to have dozens of referrals that can't even remember your name. Are you ready to finally start your financial coaching business and transform lives? My program, Become a Coach, is open for enrollment and it is for you if you want to start and grow your own financial coaching business. I know that you want to help people and you're willing to put in the work, but these doubts are holding you back. Will people actually pay for help from a financial coach? What if I'm not able to help people the way that I imagined? I don't know the first thing about coaching. It's probably too complicated. And the truth is, I understand where you're at because I felt the exact same way. I struggled with self-doubt and I've overcome imposter syndrome again and again. I was afraid of what other people would think and I didn't have a healthy mind money mindset when it came to selling. If that sounds like you, I know where you're at and I know how to get you to where you want to be. You don't have to waver on the fence any longer. Join my step-by-step -step program, Become a Coach, by clicking the link below. Here's three more ideas on how to continue increasing your communication skills while also getting financial coaching clients. And those are starting your own podcast or YouTube channel, hosting a online workshop or in-person workshop by yourself, and then also hosting a challenge or a giveaway. A podcast where you can invite other professionals on is such a great way to continue to improve your communication skills, provide value for your audience, and collaborate with other professionals. And YouTube is very similar. If you go back to my first couple videos and maybe don't, maybe just take my word for it, you can tell that my confidence and my communication skills are like out of this world now compared to where it was when I first started. And remember, I was like three and a half years into being full-time in my business, which is just crazy. If you put time and effort into improving your communication skills, it will pay off. Similar to that is number eight, hosting a free in-person or online workshop or training. And this is such a great way to improve your skills get clients because it really showcases you as the coach in a professional setting. And as you grow, it's super easy to upgrade that free workshop into a paid workshop and take it on the road to do it at schools, churches, workplaces. And here's a pro tip for you. Take pictures. Just have a friend come by. It doesn't have to be professional pictures, but just take pictures that you can use as content and also on your website. That way, when you're pitching this idea to schools, workplaces, churches, you have that content that you can show them and they can get a great visual of what exactly you'll be doing. Next idea is to host a free challenge or giveaway. And this is an okay idea. I would definitely do it in conjunction with some of the other stuff that I've been telling you because I did a paid one during COVID and it was a lot of fun. It was great. The clients got great great results, but there isn't a whole lot of face-to-face -face interaction. This is just another tool, something to, again, keep in your back pocket when you're having a great one-to-one -one with someone. Maybe you could collaborate to do a free challenge to both of your audiences combined, or maybe you could bring this idea to your networking group and talk to them about it so they could see your creativity and how much time and effort you put into your work. Idea number 10 is referrals. And I know I've been talking about this and really building up to it, but here's the thing. Think about this. If someone has has a contact point with you in person first, and then they join maybe a free workshop that you do. They go through your coaching program. They have a great experience. Don't you think that they're so much more likely to refer you to friends and family than someone who just randomly Googled you and signed up? The relationship with your clients starts before they actually become clients. All of those points of contact with that person before they sign up speak volumes. People are in debt. It's not really a question of whether or not people need a financial coach. I think that that's been proven, but it's that people need to know that this is an option. They need to find someone that they know, like, and trust. And this leads me to number 11, believe in what you do. If you don't believe that you're an amazing financial coach, nobody else is going to believe you either. I heard this listening to a podcast and the podcast host said that he got it from somewhere else too. So who knows where it originated? I didn't make it up, but it's this idea that you have to either build your belief or borrow your belief. I could probably do an entire video on that mic drop, but it really made me think about the story in the Bible with Jesus and the lame man 
when his friends had the belief that Jesus could heal him. And so they lowered him down through the roof because they couldn't get to Jesus otherwise. And Jesus says, because of your friend's belief, your sins are forgiven, get up and walk, you've been healed. It's so amazing, the power of our beliefs and the influence that this has on other people. When we were in the thick of paying off our house, I got a lot of negative messages about it telling me I should just invest instead, blah, blah, blah. But there was one message that I got that I saved in LinkedIn. It was from Jeremy and it was him encouraging me because him and his wife had also paid off their house and he told me that it was just so worth it. I literally saved this message on LinkedIn so that it popped up immediately anytime I opened the app. And it's just crazy to me that this complete stranger encouraging me, I really held on to that belief. I borrowed that belief from Jeremy that this was going to be worth it while I built that belief myself. As a coach, it's okay to borrow the belief that you are an amazing coach from me, from other coaches, from other people that you meet inside my Become a Coach program. It's okay to invest in yourself and really borrow that belief while you continue to build your own because guess what? Your clients are also gonna be borrowing the belief that they can do it from you. It's incredible to me the confidence transformation that happens when my clients go through my program from start to finish. With me, they are able to borrow the belief and then build that belief themselves that they are capable of living in financial freedom. This is a little bit of a long one today. Comment below, if you made it all the way to the end, comment below, borrowing belief or building your belief? Comment that below. I always love connecting with the people that watch all the way to the end of the video. In my head, I'm always like, nobody watches all the way to the end. And then I see these comments from you guys, which is just amazing.